What do you mean by classes and objects in C++ programming? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So, let us ask yourself that obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term classes and objects in C++ programming? Well, let's find out. So, first let us see what you mean by a class. A class is the basic elemental building block of object-oriented programming in C++. So, it is with the help of these classes that we implement object-oriented programming in C++. So, classes are the basic elemental building blocks. It is a user-defined data type. So, a data type is defined as a type of data. That is, if I say integer data type, the type of data is an integer, it is a number. Or if I say a character data type, the type of data is a character, that is, it is a text. So similarly, here it is up to us to decide the type of data that a particular class can store. So therefore, a class will contain both functions as well as variables. That is, it has data members that are variables and it has got functions. So therefore, a class will have both functions as well as variables inside it. So it is up to us to decide what type of functions and what types of variables can be there inside a class. Let me make it simple for you. So when we think of a car, the first thing that comes to our mind is that it has got four wheels, it has got a seat inside it, it has got a steering wheel, it has got an engine. So all these are basic properties of a car. So be it any car, be it a Mercedes Benz, be it BMW, be it Audi, be it Volkswagen, be it any car, all these these cars will have these same properties. That is, all these cars belong to a particular class. So here, car is the class and the properties of these cars include all the various things that is having a seat, it has got four tires. So all these are the data members of this particular class which is a car and the functions may include engine start, stop. So all these are functions of this particular car and now this is a particular class and these are the data members inside the class and these are the member functions inside this particular class. And now similarly we can define another class maybe bikes. So bikes are different from cars, bikes only have two tires. So therefore here the property of a bike is that it has got two tires. And now it has got just one seat and now it has got a function start, stop. So this is a different data type altogether. So under this particular class of bikes, these has got different data types and different functions. So therefore this is another class all by itself and these are the data members and data functions inside this particular class. As simple as that guys. So here we are given the full freedom to decide what type of a data type are we defining? So now, here uh, in C++ programming, a class is defined using the keyword class. It is defined using the keyword class. So now we write class and now we write the name of the class that we need. Maybe let us say class car. So here, this is a particular keyword that we use and this is the name of the class that we're giving. And now after this, we now open the bracket and inside this we have something referred to as access specifiers. So in, we first specify the access specifier and it is after this now we declare the data members and the member functions. And now once we close the class we have to put a semicolon like this. So this is how a basic class looks like. So here there are three types of access specifiers. private protected and public. So the thing about private access specifiers is that if we declare something within a private access specifier, those things can be accessed only within this particular class. But if we declare it as protected, it can be accessed within the class and from other classes that are derived from this particular class. But if we define access specifier as public, all the things inside that class can be accessed from anywhere inside the program. So that is basically just theory, that is basic concept. So now here, if we have to create an object and if we have to access these data members, we always specify it under public access specifiers. So now let us see how we can declare an object of this particular class 
car. So in order to declare an object, first we write the name of the class which is car. And now we just simply write whatever name we want to give to that particular object. That is car object 1. So now here a particular object of the class car has been created. As simple as that. This, this is the basic idea behind what you refer to as classes and objects. So now let us write a simple very basic program to understand the concept of classes and objects a bit more easily. So now when we write a C++ program we have to write hash include IO stream using namespace. So now first let us define a class using the keyword class. Say class hello. This is a basic class and now inside the particular class I'm declaring a public access specifier. And inside public access specifier, let me declare a data member, say int number. I have declared a data member or a variable. This is a variable. And now let me declare a function, say void print. So here let us assume that this function has to display this particular number. So we know that for the purpose of displaying, we use cout. So cout number. So now once this class has been defined, we can close this class like this. So now we have successfully created a class with a variable over here and a function over here. So now the data members and the data functions inside this class have been declared. Now let us go into the main program. So int main. So inside the main program we have to first declare an object of this particular class hello. So now in order to declare an object first we write the name of the class which is hello and then we have to write any name for a given object. We can give any name, we can give object one, we can even give my name Rishi. If you want to call that object Rishi you can give it my name Rishi or if you want to call it J-A-C-O-B Jacob or if you want to give it A, B, C, X, Y, Z you can give any name to these class names or to the object. So now since we have declared the class as hello now let us declare a particular object. Say let us take it as X, Y, Z. Hello. X, Y, Z. So this X, Y, Z is the name of the particular object we are creating of this particular class. So now here what happens is that this X, Y, Z will have both this particular variable as well as this particular function inside this. That is the beauty of classes. So this object under this class will have both this data member as well as this member function. So how do we access this? In order to access this data member and this member function of this particular object, we use the dot operator. The dot operator is used. So here we write xyz dot, that is the object name dot. What is the thing that we have to access inside this particular object? Let, it, let us access this particular variable. So therefore xyz dot number is equal to let us give a number say 5. And therefore this value of 5 will be stored in this particular number of this xyz. And now this particular class has also has a function to display that number that is C out number. So therefore we can write xyz dot print. So when we write xyz dot print it will print this particular number. This thus is a basic program by using the concept of classes and objects. This is the basic elemental idea. So if you have a thorough understanding of this particular idea then you can go into deeper deeper bigger bigger programs with ease. All you have to do is understand the basic concept and work out more and more programs. So what I want you guys to do is after understanding this particular concept of objects and classes I want you guys to go through different programs and try executing it using classes and objects. If you guys have any doubts regarding this Feel free to contact me, I'll be happy to help. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as classes and objects. And if you guys found this video informative, do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.